We have all heard the slogan that early detection is the best protection. In fact, as a health professional, I can seldom get through my weekly medical mail without having that slogan stare at me from a dozen different postcards. But in this episode, I ask you to consider another crucially important point of view. If you're a woman and concerned about breast cancer, your doctor may have asked you to get regular mammograms. Similarly, if you're a man and concerned about prostate cancer, your doctor might have advised you to get a PSA test or a prostate-specific antigen test. While these tests are very important and crucial from the standpoint of early treatment, what is one problem with them? Here is the problem. Clearly, if you detect cancer or a precancerous condition, the cancer or the precancerous condition has already occurred. In other words, you are now obligated to address a problem that has already occurred instead of having been in the position to prevent the disease from occurring in the first place. In medicine, we learn that a disturbed biochemistry is always the antecedent to observed pathology. Let's translate that. In simple language, this means that there is almost always a window of time in which disease may be prevented. Given that, I believe that true prevention doesn't begin with detection. I believe that true prevention can and should begin long before the possibility of disease detection and a really solid nutrition and lifestyle-based prevention plan might make the detection of certain cancers irrelevant. Now, before you tell me that most cancers cannot be prevented, I must interject by sharing with you that research shows us unequivocally that the vast majority of cancers are in fact preventable. In fact, only 5 to 10 percent of cancers occur due to genetic defects. We know this to be true because if you look at countries like India, we find that historically they have had about 25 times lower rates of prostate cancer and about 10 times lower rates of breast cancer relative to Western countries. And when people from India and the East migrate to the United States or to a Western nation, they too begin to have the same rates of cancer within one generation as indigenous Western populations. In the words of Dr. Walter Willett, professor of epidemiology at the Harvard School of Public Health, with careful attention to the foods we eat, not smoking, and regular physical activity, we find that greater than 70% of certain cancers are preventable, and also 80% of heart attacks are preventable. Given that, I feel it would be not only folly, but fatal for us to ignore what true prevention-based efforts can do for us. This year, more than 1 million Americans and 10 million people worldwide are expected to be diagnosed with cancer. This disease continues to be a worldwide killer, and 23% of Americans are going to die from it. Perhaps it is best put this way. There will always be, and should always be, an emphasis on catching a disease early and treating it early. But at the present time, given the vast reach of cancer, even in spite of decades of diligent research, it is time for us also to work simultaneously to learn how to prevent it early. And I think it may be best put this way. Early, diligent, and committed efforts to prevent cancer are a better strategy than early detection alone. Once again, I encourage you to adopt and embrace the strategy of true prevention, which means being committed proactively to learning about nutrition and lifestyle choices that will help you prevent this deadly disease.